we've been working with a company called Lignocyte who manufacture concrete blocks and we've set up our plant on there where we're manufacturing aggregate from air pollution control residues from municipal incinerators. So we treat um, what's known as APCR um, using carbon dioxide and in our process we capture more carbon dioxide in the aggregate than we used to in the machinery etc for the process. So our aggregate comes out at around um, 20 minus 20 kilos per tonne carbon negative. So Lignocyte have been using that in their blocks and because of the mixed design of their blocks, they can show that the blocks themselves are carbon negative and at around minus 14 kilos per tonne. Now, the reason for that is because they also use wood in their blocks. So that overcomes the fact that you've, you've got to use cement in a, in a concrete block. We have a process that's known as accelerated carbonation. So if you take... Um, residue from um, processes, anything so like fly ashes, um, ashes for, from biomass burning, steel slags or um, uh, cement kiln dust. These have all gone through a thermal process which means that they've got calcium silicate minerals which are naturally reactive to carbon dioxide and in the acceleration process we just improve the carbonation reaction by playing with the moisture content and those sorts of things so that carbonation occurs within five, ten minutes. So the calcium salts, everything from calcium oxide to the calcium silicates are reacted with carbon dioxide to form calcium carbonate. And that calcium carbonate then locks up the heavy metals, particularly in the um, residue and also cements the grains together so you have a combination of solidification and stabilization both a chemical and a physical stabilization of the materials. The process to uh, make the aggregate in the first place it, that's the world first carbon negative aggregate um, and uh, actually using accelerated carbonation in a commercial way as we are doing is is a world first and we have patents to cover what we're doing. Obviously we've got to cover the cost of, of the CO2 because at the moment the CO2 comes from a sugar beet factory just up the road from our, our plant so it's captured CO2 but we have to pay for it and it's quite expensive. <laughs> Surprisingly there's a shortage of CO2 in in the UK at least um, because you have to, at the moment you have to buy it in a bottle, so it comes in a, in a tanker effectively. But we capture the CO2 about um, up to 10% by weight in our aggregate is captured CO2. Um, but the main advantage from us is that we are removing a waste stream from landfill. So energy from waste facilities up until now have had to send their fly ash, the air pollution control residue, to landfill or treatment that has ended up with sludges going to landfill. But our solution is a purely recycled solution. So energy from waste facilities can now claim that they're 100% recycling.